Dietrich Erkart was a German anti-Semitic, playwright, journalist, and publicist, who was one of the founders of the German Workers' Party, the predecessor to the Nazi Party. Erkart was a key influence on Adolf Hitler in the early years of the party. The original publisher of the party newspaper, and the lyricist of the first party anthem. He was a participant in the failed Beer Hall Putsch in 1923 and died on the 26th of November of that year, shortly after his release from Landsberg Prison from a heart attack. Eckhart was born on the 23rd of March, 1868, in Newmarket, about 20 miles south of Nuremberg, in the Kingdom of Bavaria, the son of Christian Eckhart, a royal notary and lawyer, and his wife Anna, a devout Catholic. Eckhart's mother died when he was 10 years old and he was expelled from several schools. In 1895, his father died, leaving him a considerable amount of money that Eckhart soon spent. Eckhart initially studied law at Erlangen, later medicine at the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich and was an eager member of the fencing and drinking student corps. He decided in 1891 to become a poet, playwright and journalist. Diagnosed with morphine addiction and nearly stranded, he moved to Berlin in 1899. There he wrote a number of plays, often autobiographical, and became the protégé of Count George von Holsen Hesseler, the artistic director of the Prussian Royal Theatre. After a duel, Eckhart was incarcerated at the Passau Obenhof. As a playwright, Urquhart had success in the 1912 adaption of Henrik Ebenson's Pier Gint, which played for more than 600 performances in Berlin alone. Although Urquhart never had enough of theatrical success like Pier Gint and blamed his numerous failures on the influence of the Jewish in German culture, that one play not only made him wealthy, but it gave him the social contacts that he used later to introduce Hitler to dozens of important German citizens. These introductions proved to be pivotal in Hitler's rise to power. Later on, Urquhart developed an ideology of a genius Superman, based on the writings of Voice author uh, George Lanz von Liebenfeld, and by the philosopher Otto Wiegenegger. Eckhart saw himself following the traditions of Heinrich Hein, Arthur Schopenhauer, and Angelus Celesius. He also became fascinated by the Buddhist doctrine of Maya or illusion. From 1907, Eckhart uh, lived with his brother Wilhelm in Doberitz Mansion Colony, west of the Berlin city limits. In 1913, he marries Rose Marx, an affluent widow from the Bad Blackenburn, and returned. To Munich. Eckhart's five-act version of Ibsen's piece, the play became a powerful dramatization of nationalist and anti-Semitic ideas, in which Gint represents the superior Germanic hero, struggling against the implicity of the German trolls. In Ibsen's original play, Peer Gint leaves Norway to become the king of the world, but through his selfishness and his deceptiveness, his actions and his body and soul are ruined as he returns to his native village in shame. Eckhart, however, sees Gint as a hero who challenges the trollish Jewish and his transgressions are therefore noble and Gint returns to reclaim the innocence of his youth. This conception of the character was influenced by Eckhart's hero, Otten Weigenegger, who led him to see Gint as an anti-Semitic genius. In this racial allegory, the trolls and the great boy represent Weigenegger's concept of Jewishness. Urquhart's anti-Semiticism was influenced by the fraudulent publication the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which had been brought to the German people by white Russian emigres fleeing the October Revolution. The book purported to outline the international Jewish conspiracy for control of the world, and many right-wing voice political figures believed it to be a true account. 
In 1921, Urquhart promised a thousand marks to everyone who would cite one Jewish family, whose sons had served longer than three weeks at the front during the First World War. The Hanover rabbi Samuel Frund named 20 Jewish families, who met this condition and sued Urquhart when he refused to pay the reward. During the trial, Frund named 50 more Jewish families, with up to seven veterans, among whom were several which lost up to three sons in the war. Eckhart lost the case and was forced to pay the amount in full. Eckhart, who was 21 years older than Hitler, became the father figure to a group of younger Bolshevik men, including Hitler and Hermann Esser, and acted as a mediator between the two when they clashed, telling Esser that Hitler, who was esteemed as the DAP's best speaker, was the far superior man. He became Hitler's mentor, exchanging ideas with him and helping to establish theories and beliefs of the party. He lent Hitler books to read, gave him a trench coat to wear, and made correct corrections to Hitler's style of speaking and writing. Hitler was was to say later, stylistically, I was still an infant. Eckhart also schooled the provincial Hitler in proper manners and regarded Hitler as his protege. In March of 1920, at the behest of Karl Mert, the German general staff officer who first introduced Hitler to politics, Hitler and Erkant flew to Berlin to meet with Wolfgang Kapp and take part in the Kapp Putsch, as well as to forge a connection between Kapp's forces and Mert. Kapp and Erkant knew each other. Kapp had donated a thousand marks in support of Erkant's weekly magazine. However, the trip was not a success. Hitler himself wore a false beard, was afraid of heights and got airsick on the way, it being his first aeroplane flight. And when they arrived in Berlin, the Putsch was already collapsing. Nor did they create a positive impression with the Berliner's captain, Voldemar Patz, as is said to have told them, the way you look and talk, people are going to laugh at you. Urquhart introduced Hitler to wealthy potential donors and connected to the Voikert movement. They moved together to raise the money for the DAP in Munich, using Urquhart's contacts, but did not have great success. In Berlin, however, where Urquhart was better connected with the rich and powerful, they raised considerable funds, including those from senior officials at the Pan-German League. Together, they made frequent trips to the capital. During one of them, Urquhart introduced Hitler to the future etiquette to Uta and socialite Helen Beckstein. It was through her that Hitler began to move among the upper class of Berlin. Eckhart promoted Hitler as Germany's coming saviour. Eckhart's hero, Otto Wageninger, had formulated a dictomy in which genius and Jews were opposed. Genius, in Wageninger's view, was the epitome of masculinity and non-materialism while Jews were femininity in its purest form. Eckhart took upon himself this philosophy and considered that the role of genius was to rid the world of the baleful influence of Jews. Many parts of German society held similar views and were looking for a saviour, a German messiah, a genius to lead them out of the economic and political morass the country had fallen into as a result of the Great Depression and the economic effects of the Treaty of Versailles that ended World under Eckhart's tutelage, Hitler first began to think of himself as that person, a superior being, because it was generally believed the genius was born and not made. He could not present himself as having been mentored by Eckhart and others. Thus, in Mein Kampf, Hitler did not mention Eckhart or Karl Marx or the others who had been instrumental in creating what the world has now meant to see as the natural genius, Adolf Hitler, the German Messiah. Shortly after the party purchase of the Voikerschecher Bierbarte in December of 1920, and Eckhart's installation as editor, with Rosenberg as his assistant, 
the two men had begun to use the newspaper as a vehicle to disseminate this Hitler myth. The notion that Hitler was a superior being, a genius who would be the divine German messiah, the chosen one. The paper did not refer to Hitler as merely the leader of the Nazi party. Instead, he was Germany's leader. Other newspapers in Bavaria began to call Hitler the Bavarian Mussolini. This promoted the idea of Hitler's specialness, and it began to spread so that two years later, in November of 1922, a newspaper would look ahead to when the masses of people will raise Hitler up as their leader and give Hitler their alliance to death through thick and thin. Urquhart died in Berkshire Gegen Garden on the 26th of November 1923 of a heart attack. He was buried in Berkshire Garden Old Cemetery, not far away from the eventual graves of the Nazi party official Hans Lahmens and his wife and daughter. Although Hitler did not mention Urquhart in his first volume of Mein Kampf, after Urquhart's death, he dedicated the second volume to him, writing that Urquhart was one of the best, who devoted his life to awakening of our people, in his writings and his thoughts, and finally, in his deeds. In private, he would admit Urquhart's role as his mentor and teacher, and said of him in 1942, we have all moved forward since then. That's why we don't see what Urquhart used to be back then, a polar star. The writings of all lovers were filled with platitudes. But if he told you off such wit, I was more an infant than in terms of style. Hitler later told one of his secretaries that his friendship with Urquhart was one of the best things he had experienced in his life, and that he would never again have a friend whom he felt such a harmony of thinking and feeling. And that is the life of Dietrich Urquhart. Thanks for watching another banger from History Overlooked. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Medicine at the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich. I'm going to kill myself. I Thanks for watching another banger from History Overlooked. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like and turn on notifications. Drinking on. Yeah. I'm right now. Uh, I think I can pronounce all this. The oh, for God's sake, what is the great boy? What is the great boy? Why's it got a line in it? Pardon? Why's it the great boy? <laughs> oh, fuck off, I'm out.